have is a coordinated attack on our family. We pick up right where we left off. Casey's in his office. Obviously, these guys have come in trying to take him out. He gets a call from Rip. Rip, he's just been shot. Where? Every fucking where, Casey. Now he's thinking, OK, something big is happening here. We see that Beth survived, something that she should not have survived. She walks out of that building, burned from top to toe. And there's some sort of omnipotent power, life force that she comes out of that building with. Casey just does what Casey would probably do in that situation. Think later, destroy these guys first. Where the fuck are you hiding? You know, that's part of what we love about Casey, that he has that sort of wild side, and it really gets to come out in that scene. Casey, there's too many people! Casey! For me, it was incredible to film something like that. It's not something I get to do every day. This is just a little bit of, you know, retribution. started off with a bang. Tate. There's such intensity to that. Ugh. Just equal amounts of chaos, especially with Tate having to really step up in this time to save his mother, something that a boy should never have to do. My heart was racing, him coming running out of that house. I come blowing up on a horse with a rifle. We'll just get to the bunkhouse. It's interesting because there is a lot of confusion for Monica, the way it's shot, all the sort of disparate pieces, and you know, even reading it, I felt like her in the sense of, I was like, what has just happened? Which I think is very much how she feels. We do some atrocious things. Everybody's got a gun in their hand and everybody has somebody that they're about to kill, you know, right off the bat. This is another level. What's burning? Sorry, Rip. I just didn't have the heart to tell you. It's a really emotional moment the cabin smoldering just thinking about all of what he worked for that's a disconnect code oh my God. what is what is today john has to play catch up he's lost weight he's in a hospital and surrounded by strangers you need to lay down You're laying down long enough i think that's probably the worst two months of her life and that's saying a lot because beth's been through so much but she thinks she's going to lose him she finds out that he's going to survive daddy she becomes a sort of caretaker and she looks after him and she nurses him and there's a sort of nurturing side of Beth. Just get some rest. Mm -hmm. She needed to know that he was going to be OK. I'd like to end this day on a victory. Casey and John, they've come a long way. It's nice that their relationship now is sort of healed. What are you hunting? I was hunting us. But in true Yellowstone form, that nice moment becomes a little dark. Now you're back at, here's what we've got to do next. We haven't got anything until you get the cinder sun. Beth is convinced that Jamie is um, responsible for the attack. For as violent as John is, he has to be certain. He doesn't want to believe the same thing that Beth believes. She doesn't know how, she doesn't know the details, but she knows in her soul that he has something to do with it. Can I have a moment alone with my brother, please? Beth bursts into um, Jamie's office, full force, ready to take him down. It's intense, and even for Beth, I think a step further than I think Jamie pictures her going. It was you, wasn't it? Finding out who did this and destroying them, there's nothing more important. It gets so dark, and with Jamie, those scenes, there's such a betrayal that it's emotional. They're the, some of the hardest scenes I've ever had to do are the ones with Jamie. 
Those scenes with Kelly are always my favorite because they're always so complicated and she brings such a high level. And then they're always kind of physical. So there's the wild card thrown in there, but we trust each other. So that makes it really work. I would have fucking kill you for what you did to my family. Think hard about what you're saying, Beth. You're threatening a state official. I am threatening the whole fucking state. There is a unique opportunity that we haven't seen before. We can explore a family generationally. Tim McGraw is joining us, which I'm personally very excited about. Why aren't they on the reservation? I don't know. Taylor called and then he said, would you ever in a million years be interested in being on our show? And my first thought was, I will be there tomorrow. We will explore the dawn of this legacy through the great characters that Tim created. Do you trust them? Son, I don't trust anyone. That's really a theme that passes throughout generation, 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 all the way up to the modern storytelling of Yellowstone. Seeing these different time periods, you see that the problems that they're facing are really relevant in any era. I think that's really important. There's an existential conversation that's going on rather than just these two guys talking about why he wants to bury his father there. You start to see the honor that JD has, and I think the honor that carries through the Dutton family all the way through. And he understands, as a human, what this means. These horses look hungry. They are. You look hungry, too. It's an opportunity to see the seed of this ranch and give as accurate a representation of what life was like for both the Duttons and the Native Americans in that region. I'll leave you beef. His family can graze too. Thank you. It was fascinating to me to show, you know, how far we've come and how far we haven't come. It's one of the first times John ever really comes into the bunkhouse, actually like sitting down and engaging. I'm here to say I'm sorry, and I'm to say thank you. They stop. This is not something that happens all the time. The fact that he doesn't go there a lot has actually worked for us to have a scene in there. It's proper to thank people in any walk of life. Thank you for fighting back. None of the people in the bunkhouse knew how much they needed him to come and say, I appreciate you guys, and I'm here with you. Looks like you boys could use some beer, huh? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's this this overall sentiment of, you're in our place. Just gonna let you know, when we play cards, we like to tackle out of trash, so don't get your feelings hurt. I ain't love one of you boys think you can insult me, give it your best shot. With as much at stake as what we have in our show, it would have been a miss to not take that opportunity. Rip is kind of one of those get it done kind of guys. So in typical Rip fashion, there's this beautiful kind of serene setting of a guy fly fishing and this man just coming, walking straight at him into the water and, you know, opening a cooler and out flies a rattlesnake. A little present from the What? A cooler and a snake. Who knew? That might be my favorite death in TV history. And Josh did a great job too in, in dying. Good riddance. I fucking love that. <laughs>